Welcome to a tutorial video on Bitsy 8. So we've previously learned that there are multiple concepts we can use within Bitsy. We can use the avatar, thing we move around, tiles, backgrounds, and walls, sprites, things we interact with, and items, things we use. As it comes to sprites and items, we can mess with their interactions, what Bitsy calls dialogue. So if I move over to Sprite as part of the paint tool right here, I see it's dialogue and I can pop this out as a separate tool and create a flow from top to bottom of the interactions I want to do within the dialogue tool. We've previously seen how we can add different dialogue, different page breaks, creating new dialogue boxes. We can also use the sequence list, cycle list, shuffle list, and branching list. That last one in particular is incredibly important as we talk about how we can interact with items. Remember, an interaction with an item within a room uses that item, it disappears from the room, and then becomes part of our inventory. When that happens, numbers change as part of the inventory. So let's go ahead and look at that real quick. An item over to inventory, and this is the inventory tool right here, and we have items. As we interact with items, they disappear from the room and increase the count of whatever we're tracking. And by adding things over in the paint tool, it increases over in the inventory tool. So we've now seen, working with branching lists, that we can interact with things and now cause consequences within a room. So as part of this video, I want to create an extended example by revisiting the idea of locking and unlocking doors using keys, because this can be incredibly important to let us set up more complicated stories or games within Bitsy by having tasks or goals or things we need to do within a room before we move to another room, potentially another section of a story or game, whatever we're creating. So let's revisit that. So for right now, I'm going to close the dialog and inventory tools. Go ahead and close the download tool as well. And what I want to set up is I want to set up a two-way exit. A two-way exit allows us to move between a room. And we remember that a room is just a subsection of a game or project, whatever we're making in Bitsy. A two-way exit allows us to move from one room to another and then back again. So to create an exits and ending over here in the room tool, I've got exits and endings pre-selected. I'm gonna go ahead and pop out the tool, exits and endings, and I'm gonna go ahead and add one and create an exit. Now, right now, I only have one room. So I'm gonna go over here in the room tool up here and duplicate this room. So now I've got example room and example room copy one. So over here in example room with the exits and endings tool open, I'm gonna click on move and then click up here in the corner and notice this right here helps us to align as a little bit of a kind of mini map. Then I'm gonna to shift to another room, click move over here for the return and click it up there as well. Notice the exit and the return exit, two way exit, are in the same place. And that's just going to help me make sense of those. So what we wanna add now is a lock for this door. So by default, if we go ahead and click add lock for this interaction, notice exit dialog, it's going to go ahead and take something that's pre-built into the Bitsy example, the default example. This is a branching list. And so we previously discussed how a branching list allows us to in, uh, react to interactions. That is, if key in inventory is greater than or equal to one, then it's unlocked, which means lock is false and the key opens the door, Otherwise, the property is locked and the door is locked. So previously, when we looked at property locked or property unlocked, that is locked equals false or locked equals true, we're establishing whether or not an interaction goes through its defaults. So for exits, the default is moving you to another room. So if the property is locked, then that default interaction does not work. Put another way, if we lock a door, we can't go through it. So if the lock is false, the door is unlocked. A little bit of complicated way of thinking about doors, but it works for this. So this is pre-built in, and this says, okay, if the key is in the inventory greater than or equal to one, which means we've done at least one interaction, so equal to one, or greater than one, we might have interacted with multiple keys potentially, then we can go through the door. So let's go ahead and put a key in the first room so that we can collect the key and then go through the door. 
So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to first temporarily close this and then come over to the paint tool over to items from T over to key. And I'm going to come down here to the dialog and I'm going to take out the dialog and then I'm going to place it in the room. And remember, of course, and I keep doing this to myself as well, come over to the room tool and make sure you're selected paint. I occasionally make this mistake as well from exits and endings over to paint because now we want to paint or place things. So now we've painted the key. So we've got a key in a room. And now if we interact with the key, that is use the key, it will change the inventory, which will then enable a branch of the branching list, which allows to unlock the door. Put another way to get through the door, we need the key. So let's go ahead and play this. So as a reminder, remove the avatar around using WASD or the arrow keys. I'm not going to use the item. Keep in mind, items are things we use up when we interact with them. Sprites stick around for future potential interactions. And I know the door is up here. The key opens the door. So we interacted with at least one key. It is greater than or equal to one. And now we were in another room. And now we're back in this room. And the key opens the door every time. So let's go ahead and stop. So now what I want to do is I'm going to create a second key and a second two-way exit and then set up a branching list such that we need a different key to come back to the example room. So let's look at how to do that. That will be slightly more difficult. So what I want then is I want to go ahead and create a new key over here. So I've got a key. I can go ahead and duplicate the item and key two just to make the name slightly more useful. And I'm gonna shape it like this, just so it's a slightly different shape. And now what I'm gonna do is come over here and place it in the other room right here. So we've got key two, which is an item I duplicated from the original key and I placed it in a second room. So now what, we're going, what we do this time is let's set up instead of a two-way exit, a one-way exit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this exit come back over here to this room and delete this. Do I want to delete it? Yes, I do. And I'm going to delete this as well. So now I've got no exits and endings. So what I want to do is I want to set up a one way exit. So I go from example room to example room copy one, which is this over here with the other key. So I'm going to create a new exit, a one way exit, do my move thing again, set up this corner, move to the other room, click on move, move to the other corner right here. So same corner, just for consistency. And then what I want to do is I want to set up a lock. It's going to default to key, which is exactly what we want. Notice this is key, key unlocks it. Perfect, it's exactly what I want for this. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new exit right here, one way exit. I'm going to over, make sure I'm looking at example room copy one. I'm going to move it down here. And then I'm going to move back to example room. And I'm going to move it down here. So when we come up here, it's a one-way exit into the next room. And then in the other room, we'll come down to the other corner and we will come back. So make sure I'm looking at exit two of two right here. And then I want to add a lock. And I've got locked exit three. And now I want to change this. Now I'm not paying attention to key. And from the drop down, I'm interested in key two. But the exact same text, that's totally fine right here. Key opens door or key is locked. That's perfectly fine. And greater than equal to one is also fine. There's only going to be one key, so that's perfectly great. So let's go ahead and play this. So what I want to do, so if I come down in this corner, nothing happens for this room. And if I attempt to go in the door at the top here, it's going to tell me it's locked. But if I interact with this key using up this item, I can now go in this door. Key opens the door and it drops me in the other room. Now, if I revisit this corner, the door is not there anymore. In fact, the door is now in this corner. And the door is locked because I don't have key two. But if I interact with key two right here, I have used it up and it therefore become part of my inventory. Key opens the door, and now we're back over here. 
And we could have changed, in fact, it would be recommended to probably change the dialogue, so it's slightly the same dialogue used in both interactions. But notice we've created two different keys for two different rooms, creating two different branching lists as part of interactions were now shaped from two different items. So all of the ideas we have seen across these videos are all applicable as we build in complexity. If we want to create multiple rooms with multiple goals or multiple things we might want to do, tasks or however we want to describe them, things to collect perhaps, we can start to use branching lists to do that by adding locks, by using the exits and endings, using our knowledge of how items affect inventory and how branching lists can use what's in that inventory to make decisions about interactions using either locking or, as we've seen here, creating multiple dialogue paths from top to bottom as we're looking within the dialogue tool and creating more complex interactions if we want to by potentially adding more branching lists or the other lists that are available to us. So a longer video here, but to help us to see how we can interact with items, again, using them up, how we then can use those values that are affected as part of inventory by working with exits and endings, by adding more mechanics, unlocking, unlocking doors, working with keys, and starting to build on all of our knowledge across multiple tools, exits and endings, dialogue tool, paint tool. We're building and we're building and we're building in complexity as we learn much more about Bitsy 8. Thanks for watching.